All right, you guys, let's get it. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Well, let me read what you say in your preface. Um, you say, let me stay here. And now that these essays do, that these essays do not mean, one, all Southern whites were or are rednecks, two, all black Americans today or in the past were or are black rednecks. One cannot predict, you write, much less forestall all the clever misinterpretations that others might put on one's words. The most that can be done is to alert honest people to the problem. Black rednecks, who are they? These would be blacks who came out of the Southern culture and who, who carried that culture with them north into the, into the urban ghettos, and into the ghettos of the South for that matter. Uh, and who have not moved out of that culture since. Over the, over the years, both blacks and whites have moved away from that culture. But in the poorest and worst of the ghetto areas, there are lots of people who have not. And these kinds of, it's a, it's a culture which, which didn't do. Hold up. So basically what we, current black culture is the basis of Southern redneck culture. There's, there's, you know, I've delivered mail in some areas that are quite ghetto-ish. So, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Alert honest people to the problem. Black rednecks, who are they? These would be blacks who came out of the Southern culture and who, who carried that culture with them north into the, into the urban ghettos, and into the ghettos of the South for that matter. Uh, and who have not moved out of that culture since. Over the, over the years, both blacks and whites have moved away from that culture. But in the poorest and worst of the ghetto areas, there are lots of people who have not. And these kinds, of, it's, a, it's a culture which, which didn't do whites any good. And it's certainly not doing blacks any good today. And the tragedy is that people regard this culture as somehow the authentic black culture, and therefore you're not to interfere with it. I'm proud to be a bartender. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Black English is considered not quite proper English. On the other hand, if blacks happen to have all the power and uh, own all the corporations and whites were working for them, it would be the other way around. There was a period, I'm trying to remember now, I believe it was in the mid-70s mm. when uh, substandard English began to become a, a, yes. a, a, a began to become viewed as a discipline of its own within linguistic oh, yes. studies and so forth and for all i know it was all perfectly legitimate that certain speech patterns would be traced back to various regions in africa and so forth and this is this is a language of its own it has its own validity but the argument your argument would be I don't really care what its validity is. It's holding people back. It's, yes. it's preventing them per, from participating in the wider society. Is that right? Ab absolutely. And also. Hmm. All right. So that's, that's a lot to take in right there. So basically black current black culture on the soft end is like a byproduct of like Southern redneck culture. Now I get that part where they were mentioning about, I get that part when they were mentioning about, that we've taken that culture and made that black culture. But then he talks about going into proper English and Ebonics and stuff. And But couldn't you say that's a product of miseducation in a way? That's not, you know, black folks, we got our own way of like, not changing the definition of words, but like shortening the, shortening the pronunciation basically. Like we'll take two words and make it one word. You know, it would, we'll take one, two words and make it one just by the way we pronounce it. But I just, I just wanna see where he go. Let me let him speak. Your argument would be, I don't really care what its validity is. It's holding people back. It's, yes. it's preventing them per, from participating in the wider society. Is that right? Ab absolutely, and also, none of these things went back to Africa. Oh, is that so? No, you, you can, yes, they did not go back to Africa. Uh, if you look at the, the peach, for example, using the word ax for ask and stuff like that, uh, all of that goes back to the South, and, the, and, and it goes back to the parts of Britain from which white Southerners came. So if you trace the call, calling uh, hog entrails chitlins, uh, that was, that, that, that was in a certain section of Britain, the section from which whites moved into the South. And, the, and they were known as uh, rednecks and crackers in Britain in centuries past. 
before they ever set foot in the South. Uh, so it, it, the whole thing is as phony as the three dollar bill. In intellectuals and race, you cite an. I've seen a three dollar bill. They, I've seen a three dollar bill before. <laughs> uh, so it, it, the whole thing is as phony as the three dollar bill. In intellectuals and race, you cite an observation by the intelligence expert, IQ scientist James Flynn, that just stopped me cold. Mm. After the Second World War, you've got large numbers of, of American troops remaining in Germany. For mm. that matter, there's still several tens of thousands there today. And both black and white American soldiers had children with German women. Mm. And Flynn discovered that those children growing up in Germany mm. showed no IQ differences at all. Mm. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. Professor Flynn concluded that the reason was that the offspring of black soldiers in Germany grew up in a nation with no black subculture, yeah. close quote. Which means what? Which means they experienced exactly the same expectations? Is this the... They no, 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 the expectations are external. The culture in which they grew up with was, was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. So they had... There's no gangster rap in, uh, uh, that, that, that was pervasively... Uh, uh, available in Germany. So here's what I'm getting. There is something about black subculture in America today mm. that holds African Americans themselves back? Yes, <laughs> because that very sub same subculture held white whites in the South back as well. That in the time, this, this uh, mental testing in the First World War turned up, among other things, the fact that uh, whites from various oh, four or five southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five northern states. But here's my problem. Like, so you can't blame that on black subculture. Yeah, I know you asked a, a thousand times, Peter. Like you, <laughs> I don't want to get, get away from this video, but you can't entirely blame that on black subculture. I mean, yeah, it, it has an element of holding people back. Let's not forget what those people were going through at the time. Let's not forget if they had the equal opportunity in Germany for education and they didn't experience what black people experienced in America uh, in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. How, how can you blame black subculture for, you know what I'm saying, even the system holding it back, holding people back? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out like, like what's... What's really the problem? Because certain kids in the hood can come out of black culture. Some, some, some can grow up in that and still be successful. But you talking about as a group, you know what I'm saying? As a group, I get what he's saying, but not as an individual. So let's go. The fact that uh, whites from various oh, four or five Southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five Northern states. And so it really was a question of the subculture that was there, which was a handicap to both. I could go on for days about the social degeneration, but let me give you just one quick example. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Now, I'm sure someone fired a gun somewhere in Harlem, but it was not such a pervasive thing that you had to hear it. You know, uh, I have relatives in Washington. I asked them the same question, people in my generation. Growing up in did, Washington, D.C. Yes, and, and low-income uh, black neighborhoods. Did you ever hear a gunshot when you were growing up? And the answer was no. I have relatives in North Carolina ask the same question. No. And now, uh, you know, people in housing projects especially, they put kids, some of them, in, uh, to bed in bathtubs so that they won't be hit by stray bullets in the night. Uh, now we take it for granted that there's crimes, uh, tremendous levels of crime and violence uh, in the black community. That was not always the case. In the 20s, it was very common for white celebrities, including George Gershwin and William Faulkner, to go up to Harlem not only for entertainment places, but to go into private homes of kid, people they knew. Uh, and Gershwin would play Rhapsody in Blue in, 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 in this, this home where, where Walter White lived. Uh, Milton Friedman, when he was a graduate student at, at Columbia, he and the lady he later married would go dancing at the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. And he said, we had no fear of being uh, mugged or accosted on the street or anything like that. Uh, you've told, I've heard you say, Tom, when you were a boy growing up in Harlem yourself, mm -hmm. th 
your own neighborhood felt totally safe to you. Not not totally safe to you. I, I wouldn't exaggerate, but it's nothing resembling today. I mean, I did sleep on hot hot nights. I would sleep out on the fire escape. When I tell people in Harlem that today, they, they think I'm, I'm, I'm from another galaxy, you know, but that people slept in, in, uh, on the fire escapes uh, in New York and in the public parks in the 30s all over the city. Because, because it was not like, it was not a jungle. You could run through a great number of other things. Uh, children raised without, without two parents present. That was about 22% in 1960. Mm -hmm. One generation later, it was 67%. And it's gone up a little since then as well. And, some, and, the, and now the rate among whites is higher than it was among blacks in 1960. Right. Right. But... They, then again, my question is, what happened between that time period to where it went from 22% to 67%? That's what you're not contrasting, you know, for me. Like, you have to, like, you have to contrast what the heck happened in that time period with families. That's not a byproduct of black, black culture. That's my, that's, that's my biggest question. You got to read between the lines, bro. Like, like you not finna just tell me it went like this because of this without telling me what happened in the meantime in, bet in between that. So we talking about the 60s. What happened in the 60s? What happened in the 60s, Mr. Sowell? Tell us the events that happened in the 60s. And then you might have, you have, you have uh, a point there, but just saying the black subculture did that, I don't know. Let me make, make the man, let the man speak. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Black people are being slaughtered in the streets, killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family. We are done watching them die. How do you define a white liberal? Those kinds of people who have the kinds of attitudes that are called liberal in the United States, although the word is misused, those people have created an atmosphere in which um, these counterproductive cultures are to be celebrated, perpetuated, uh, and the consequences overlooked. It reminds me of a scene in the Blue Max where this general is encouraging this daredevil pilot to do all kinds of wild stunts, you see, knowing that the guy is going to kill himself if he keeps doing this, and therefore the general will be rid of a, uh, of a political problem. Uh, now, I don't think that the, the white liberals are, are doing this deliberately, but I think the net results are the same. They are cheering blacks on and doing things that are absolutely self-destructive. I don't agree with One that, of but I let's go. in the research for my, for my book I'm currently working on is that leaders of groups that are lagging in countries around the world uh, almost invariably have counterproductive policy for them. And it makes perfect sense because insofar as members of lagging groups assimilate into the values and uh, achievements of the larger society, uh, they don't need those leaders. I mean, there's no, there's no mystery to me as to why Jesse Jackson says what he does, or Al Sharpton and others, because that benefits them, but it does not benefit the people they lead. And all the incentives are for, are for leaders to lead people uh, into things that, that don't help the people, but help the leaders. What, you, 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 you create an... Th That's one thing I always discovered, like uh, when it came to Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and stuff like that. You know, they self-proclaimed black leaders, but they have no infrastructure in black culture. Like, they just talk. They just... Um, they, they, they don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when you, when we look to you to help us with our problems and you ain't doing nothing but pandering, pandering or just talking, you know what I'm saying? You just sound smart, but you ain't, you can't get nothing done. You're, you're a dud in power. Like that's, that's what I define them as. It would be an exception for Dr. King, though, wouldn't there? Yes, but he, he, one of the he was he, different because he, he was right. earliest, or what? Why? What's different about? Well, it's, it's like insurgent movements in general. Uh, when an insurgency starts off, by definition, it, it, it has an uphill battle. Now, as the and you can look at the history of Christianity, for heaven's sake. Uh, if, if you're going to be a Christian in the, in, in the Roman Empire, you know, in, in, uh, before the first uh, in the first century, you had you had a lot of grief to go through. 
Now, but after Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire, this is a bonanza. And there's a lot to be done. And so now you will follow policies that are the opposite of what you advocated. You will see that with all kinds of other uh, uh, insurgent movements. Somewhere, watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it seems to me, I've all, we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the from the races industry, stay away from the what, race what, hustlers. What advi race hustlers, what advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African American in America today? The way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. Yeah. I mean, that's the same thing Kevin well, I, Samuels did, actually. He said, you equip yourself with things that people will pay for. You, may, you create the value, you create, you make yourself invaluable. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way you can kind of just sparingly dis, uh, dissipate with the ra uh, racism narrative. But the problem is, is that, you know, in the black community today, there's nothing of value there. So there's nothing for people to value, but life or black lives or whatever it is. You know, and I just, yeah, I, 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 I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. To give him a fair shake, um, I get what he's saying. I disagree with a few of his points. Um, my thing is, is that you just can't make a statement without details. And he didn't really detail, like, what happened when between that 22 to 67%. So, you know, maybe he has a documentary on what that might be. But post your comments down below, man. Let me know what you guys think, man. If you guys want to see Tom Moore Thomas on the channel, let me know in the comment box below. All right? Peace.